Greetings, Auto Subs, Video James, and today we're going to be looking at how to use Crobat. I know I said I'd be taking a break from Pokemon stuff, but unfortunately, the video I said that in kind of fell yesterday, which was right before a Monday, so I kind of had to break that promise. I will do some more unrelated Pokemon stuff over this week. Um, I'll probably do some Blown Away if I feel like it, but I will do some more non-related to Pokemon stuff this week. I will do at least one Pokemon video. But that's basically just going to be tomorrow to get it out of the way. But anyway, before I dawdle on anymore, we're going to be taking a look at how to use Crobat. So Crobat, Poison Flying type. Not the greatest typing. It means we're going to be getting the weaknesses to flying. That We're going to be getting the electric, ice, and rock weaknesses. But we are also going to be getting that ice and psychic weakness. Did I, did I just say ice and... But we are also going to be getting that psychic weakness. There we go. However, we are going to be getting a ground immunity, which is good because poison is actually weak to ground. So, Crobat actually cancels out one of its own weaknesses. And we are actually getting resist to fairy, poison, fighting, and grass. So, we are getting a fair amount of resist. Um, we are still damaged by a lot of common stuff that ice beams from Greninjas are still going to kill us. Uh, Tapu Koko with Thunderbolt, going to kill us very easily. Uh, extra sensory from Volcarona, definitely going to kill us. But when we look at Crobat's abilities, we see Inner Focus and Infiltrator. Now, Infiltrator is really good because it's basically not going to be... It's not going to be getting affected by protection. So stuff like Substitute, Light, Screen, Reflect, um, Safeguard. Your opponent really can't really use those against a Crobat with Infiltrator because it's basically just going to kind of completely fail. Because Crobat's just going to go and sneak around behind it and just shoot you with Toxic. And in Inner Focus, you don't really use that that much. Um, actually, I don't really think you use it at all, honestly. Unless you're using, like, a choice set and you don't really want to... And you don't really want to get flinched and you kind of want to do massive damage. So, really, you don't really need to use Inner Focus. You honestly kind of always have to go Infiltrator. Just because it's the better ability. And we see the base stats that we see. We got 85 in the HP, 90 in the attack, 80 in both defenses... 70 in the special attack, and then in a whopping 130 in the speed. So this thing is actually going to be speed tying with Tapu Koko, which could actually make a break a game. Uh, we see we are actually going to be fairly tanky, that with 80s in the HP and defenses, that we actually are going to survive a bit more. We're not going to be completely tanky, but we will still have a fair amount of tank to us. That will be getting somewhere around the 170s in our defenses with the 31 EVs, or 31 IVs. And while our attacks aren't the greatest in the world, they can actually be put to good use. That 279 and 239 actually can be put to a fairly good amount of usage. Um, that you can basically get modifiers off on them, which will basically make them somewhere around the 400s and 500s without really doing much effort. We see the first set is actually a Choice Banded Crobat with Infiltrator. That on this set we're running Brave Bird, Cross Poison, U-Turn, and Sleep Talk with the maxed out attack and speed and the Timid Nature. Now the idea behind this set is you're going to be hitting very hard and very fast. That this Crobat's kind of meant to be a sweeper or a late game cleanuper. That basically this Crobat can take out a lot of stuff with its high attack that with the Choice Band we're hitting somewhere into the 550s. So we are actually getting a very high amount of damage off on our opponents without really having to do too many stat boosts. So if our opponent's switching in first turn, then we're basically just going to be wrecking them with our moves. And we're running Jolly Nature just because you don't really want to boost the attacks on a Crobat. You always want to try and boost the speed as much as possible just because Crobat does have that high speed. Now, while its speed is high and it does outspeed stuff like, say, Greninja... Um, non-scarf Tapu Lele, which you never see. It does get outsped by stuff like Tapu Koko, um, Ash Greninja. It gets outsped by stuff like Mega Alakazam. There's another Pokemon with 150 speed that outspeeds it. But it isn't the fastest Pokemon. It still has a good amount of speed to it. But there are still a couple of things that can actually outspeed it, such as Alakazam. And the idea behind the moveset is we have Brave Bird, that Brave Bird having that 120 base power with the flying type stat bonus, that we are actually going to be able to do a massive amount of damage, especially with the choice band, 
that a choice banded 120 base power move with stab and a good decent amount of attack is going to kill out a lot of stuff. And Brave Bird actually does take out a lot of things that Crobat doesn't want to see otherwise. That Bocarona, Brave Bird can kind of take it out. Um, Cartana, Brave Bird can kind of take it out. Ferrothorn, Brave Bird can kind of take it out. And I think sometimes even Tangela, Brave Bird can kind of take it out. You get the point. And then we got Cross Poison there to kind of just get rid of some fairies that... Stuff like Deonsi is going to kind of get one hit KO'd by a Cross Poison. Uh, Tapu Koko is going to get very badly damaged by a Cross Poison. Uh, there's a couple other Pokemon that get damaged by a Cross Poison very badly. But I kind of can't think of them off the top of my head. And then we got U-Turn as kind of just a pivot that we can kind of just switch out of a sticky situation if we need to. And then we have Sleep Talk there just for Pokemon like Smeargle. That Smeargle having Spore a lot of the time is actually going to try and put your Pokemon to sleep, so you kind of want to put in something like Crobat that you want to kind of lead out with something that's going to be slower than a Smeargle to kind of taunt it, and then you just kind of send out the Crobat to kind of just inter intercept that Spore and just get the Sleep Talk usage. Now, you can run Leech Life, but I would recommend running Zen Headbutt as well as a possibility, just because... While Crobat does have coverage over flying types, it doesn't really have a lot of coverage over dark types. Or, dark types. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of coverage over other poison types. And that's kind of an area that you want to cover. Because Crobat doesn't really have an area to kind of take them out. So, I would say you can run Zen Headbutt or Leech Life. U-Turn doesn't really make too much usage of the bug typing. It's kind of just a pivot, so it's really only good at taking out uh, probably like stuff like Ash Greninja with... 10% HP left. Um, it does still do a massive amount of damage, don't get me wrong, but it's probably not going to be enough to one-hit KO a Tyranitar on the first turn. Now we see the next set is actually a Choice Specs Crobat. Now this is basically the same idea as the uh, Choice Banded set, except that we have Special Attack Investment instead of Attack Investment. So we get the Choice Specs to boost our Special Attack, we have Max Special Attack Investment, we have four EVs thrown into special defense, and then we just have the speed maxed out with the timid nature this time. And then we see we got Air Slash there to kind of just make up for Brave Bird. That Air Slash, while it doesn't do as bad an amount of damage, it does have that added chance of flinch. So that, combined with Choice Specs and Stab and Flying, does actually give it a fair dinkum amount of usage. And then we see we got Sludge Bomb. That Sludge Bomb, a very powerful poison move, doesn't really need to make contact on fairies and can actually do a major amount of damage. Not only that, but it does have the chance to badly poison. And we see we got Giga Drain just for that heal. That stuff like Gastrodon, uh, Marsh Stomp, Swampert, uh, sometimes Seismitoad that would kind of intercept us. Or some kind of ground types that would kind of intercept us. That we can go Giga Drain, and since our speed is higher, we're going to be outspeeding a lot of the stuff that Giga Drain would be useful on. So we can kind of just take their health. And it does also work out good as a Greninja counter, that... If someone tries to swap out a Greninja up against you first turn and try and take you out with the Ice Beam, that you can Giga Drain them first turn, and if they're Battle Bond, you're going to actually end up killing them one-hit KO. In fact, even if they aren't Battle Bond, you're going to kill them one-hit KO, because Giga Drain plus Crobat Speed and the Choice Specs is going to do way too much damage on a Greninja for it to be considered healthy. And then we got U-Turn, just for that kind of pivot. You could run, you could run Heat Wave as opposed to Air Slash. But I like Air Slash there, kind of just because it gives you more coverage. That Heat Wave kind of really only covers Ice types and all that. As well as the Grass and Steel types. But we also have Air Slash, we can, can kind of deal with all the Steel types that we're going to be running into that we can deal with with Heat Wave. Like Frothorn, Air Slash can kind of deal with that one. So I do like running Air Slash better, just because it also gets the stab bonus from flying and it has a chance to flinch. Um, overall, I would say Heat Wave could be run in place of it, that you could go Sludge Bomb, Heat Wave, Giga Drain, and U-Turn, but I don't really recommend doing that. I would recommend using Air Slash a little bit more, just because with Heat Wave, you're kind of forfeiting that chance to hit, which can be near critical on an Ice type, and since Crobat does have that weakness to Ice, you kind of don't want to really miss out on an opportunity to get rid of those. Now we see the next set we have is actually a Flyinium Z Crobat. Now, the idea behind this set is a little different. We've got the maxed out attack and speed with the Jolly Nature 
We get the four EVs thrown in defense again, but this time we're running Taunt, Roost, Brave Bird, and U-Turn. Now the idea behind this set is it's kind of a stopper set. That the idea behind this Crobat set is we're faster than a lot of the stuff that's going to be using stuff that can be taunted, like Tapu Finny. We're going to outspeed that. We can get off a taunt on it. And since it's probably going to have Moonblast or Skull, it's not really going to do that much damage to us. Um, we got Roost, kind of just give us our health recovery. And then we have Brave Bird, which when powered up by the Fly and EMZ does massive amounts of damage. And then we have U-Turn just for that pivot. So the idea behind this set is it doesn't really get too locked down. So there's a lot of coverage and a lot of flexibility in the way you can use it. Um, you can go with Roost to try and get your health back after a hit or a Stealth Rock. And wait for your opponent to try and hit you and do not enough damage. And then go for Brave Bird and U-Turn with the Flying EMZ. Or you could go up against something like Chansey. That Chansey... 90% of the time, most of its moves are actually going to be non-damaging moves. That most of the time, you are going to be soft-boiled, heal bell, and toxic as a move set. I like running Thunder Wave better, but that's just my preference. But most of the time, you are going to see a Chansey with nearly three non-hitting moves. So Crab ugh, Crobat works out really well, just because it can taunt out that Chansey and just kill it down completely to where it's stuck on Seismic Toss, and then you can switch into something like Sableye. That Sableye can intercept the Seismic Toss from Chansey, since it's that Ghost Dark type, and then it can just take out Chansey from there. That Chansey isn't really going to do much to a Sableye either, considering the fact that it basically just bounces every one of its non-damaging moves back at it. And the final set is actually a Black Sludge set. Now this set, I'm kind of controversial about. I don't really see... The point of running a sustain like this on Crobat. Um, it can work out because of the max HP and the high defenses. But with Crobat's amount of weaknesses and the amount of hard hitters out there that kind of run those kinds of weaknesses like Tapu Coco. I don't really see too much of a good move with that. So you see we got Taunt, Toxic, Roost, and Brave Bird with the max out HP and the 220 EVs thrown into the speed with the Jolly Nature. And then we see the rest of the EVs are thrown into the attack. So the idea behind this set is it's more of a Sableye kind of set. That we have Taunt to kind of shut down stuff like Chansey again. We have Toxic to kind of wear our opponent down since unless they have one of our weaknesses they're not going to be doing that much damage to us that we can just Toxic and wear them down. We have Roost to kind of just give us our health back. And then we have Brave Bird just to deal with that massive damage. That a lot of the stuff that's really going to be doing some of the damage to us is going to be stuff like Cartana. Uh, Volcarona, Ferrothorn. So we kind of just Brave Bird against that stuff and just take it out. And Brave Bird is also there because of Ferrothorn as a main point. Because Ferrothorn is part grass type. So Brave Bird from a Crobat is going to do a decent amount of damage on it. And with Crobat's max out HP, it's not going to be taking damage that much from stuff like Leech Seed. So we are actually going to be able to take the Taunt and make them not be able to throw out a Leech Seed, and then we can just Brave Bird them, or we can switch out on their anticipation of their switch. And that's actually going to be how to use Crobat, so it's basically a fairly straightforward Pokemon. You can run a Nasty Clock Crobat set, but a lot of the time when you run that, you are going to have to run Focus Sash, and a lot of time people don't really like running Focus Sash on Crobat, just because it's got the max out speed, and it kind of works better with the choice items that the choice items kind of keeps it safe a little better than the Focus Ash. But anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. If you guys have any suggestions for Pokemon you want to see me do, let me know down in the comments. And if you guys actually did like this video, you can slap the like button as always, and I will see all you beautiful people in the next video.